Yes, in this period there are several categories of men and women which the media tend to represent by using a geographic themes. The most common representation uh, in this sense is probably the one concerning physicians, nurses and health workers in general, which are often represented in the, represented in the mediatic discourse as saints, as angels. This is happening not only in Italy. I think, for example, of the set of affrescos entitled Saints Were White. Uh, these affrescos were realized by a Chinese artist and designer in China, in, um, in the province of Wuhan, where the um, epidemics began. And um, they represent health workers in their professional clothes on the walls of a Christian chapel. So there is this church, this Christian chapel, and on the internal walls of this church there uh, is the representation of these figures. So in this case we have the representation of a professional category uh, in religious terms or more precisely by using traditional, a traditional iconography normally uh, reserved to uh, sacred characters. So in a, in a certain way we have a sort of uh, sanctification of a, a professional category. Then we have other cases. For instance, we are assisting to the multiplication of acts of self-sacrifice for the other's sake. And in many cases, this self-sacrifice is um, explicitly performed in the name of Christian values. There is a famous example uh, which concerns an Italian priest. Uh, this priest was suffering from uh, coronavirus and he uh, offered his respirator the respirator that his parishioners bought for him to a younger man who was apparently a perfect stranger to him. Uh, and as a consequence, this priest died from coronavirus. The news uh, about this story was reported in the BBC and in the other major uh, news channels in the world. And in many cases, and not only in Catholic sources, this priest was mm, described as an example of sanctity, as a model uh, for, of sanctity for our days, and more specifically as a martyr for charity. This uh, reference to martyrdom for charity uh, is particularly directed to a new way to become saints, which was approved by the Church in 2017. Indeed, until 2017, the two models of behavior, or we could say uh, narrative programs uh, that the Church admitted for officially recognizing saints, were two. The first was martyrdom, and martyrdom consists in the sacrifice of life in order to defend the Christian faith. So we have a narrative scheme that uh, entails on the one hand the martyr who willingly offers his life to defend his faith and on the other hand we have a persecutor so someone who kills the the martyr specifically acting specifically because of the hatred against the Christian faith so this is the nar narrative scheme at the base of martyrdom on the other hand, we have uh, the heroicity of virtues. So the second traditional way to sainthood is the heroic practice of virtue, which consists in a long-lasting uh, practice and constant practice of Christian virtues to an exceptionally high degree. Um, these two ways to martyrdom were crystallized very early in Christian tradition and they survived uh, during the whole uh, church of history more or less the since more or less since the 4th century 
Then in 2017, Pope Francis introduces a third way to sainthood consisting in the offering of life. He did so through a motu proprio letter entitled Maiorem ac Dilectionem um, and the, this title refers to a verse of the Gospel where Jesus says that there is no greater love than offering one's life for one's friends. So, on the base of this verse, a new case to sainthood is introduced which uh, entails the sacrifice of one's life in the name of charity. So offering uh, one's life for the love of the others. Why this case was introduced? Well, there was a, a long-lasting theological debate at the base of this uh, choice. And it's curious and it's interesting to observe that one of the um, problems that was debated by theologians uh, was uh, the case of the so-called martyrium per pestem. Therefore, uh, it was a problem sanctifying those people who offered them their life while treating the others uh, in the case of uh, uh, plague epidemics and so on. Because these, these characters were surely examples of Christian love, so in a way they were surely models of sanctity, but they could not be labelled as martyrs because they did not offer their life uh, to defend Christian faith, nor their exceptionality, their sanctity was connected primarily to a long-lasting and exceptional practice of Christian virtues over a long period of time. So these figures could not be um, canonized just because they did this. Therefore, they sacrificed their, themselves to save the other's life uh, in case of uh, a plot. And this was a problem that was already discussed in a very important source for the, the Catholic regulation of sanctity, which is the treatise by Prospero Lambertini about uh, beatification and canonization um, dating 18th century. Then in, in the 20th century there was a proliferation of models of sainthood. Uh, we have um, new types of saints, uh, there is a, 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 a strong emphasis put on the role of lay people as models of sainthood and so on. And uh, there were uh, also problematic cases which was complicated to label either as uh, martyrs or as um, uh, cases of heroic practice of virtues. For instance, uh, there are the martyrs of the concentration uh, camps in, uh, in the Nazi uh, Germany, like Maximilian Kolbe. In this case, there is an offering of life. Maximilian Kolbe offered his life to save the life of another prisoner. And because of all of these uh, problems in um, in defining this uh, new uh, this, this way to sainthood uh, inside the, the Catholic jurisprudence, in order to solve this problem, uh, which uh, um, was uh, reputed more and more important because of the proliferation of the new models of sanctity, in 2017 there was um, this uh, motu proprio admitting this new form of sainthood. Now, what is happening now with these acts of self-sacrifice is a good example, a good concretization of this case. So I think it's possible, it's, it's probable that in the near future uh, some um, cause for canonization will be open for uh, people like this priest who offer, uh, who offer their lives for the other's sake. On the other hand, we also have to consider another phenomenon, namely that during the 20th century the Church has um, started to canonize a growing number of scientists and physicians. Uh, of course, some figures of physicians were already canonized in previous centuries, but in these cases um, the, the fact of being a physician was not one of the main traits which determined the, <clears throat> the, the sanctity of the character, which was thought as a, one of the main components of the figure of those saints. 
One example, very, 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 very famous, is Saint Luke, who uh, was, according to the tradition, is supposed to be a physician. But of course, Catholic community does not consider uh, Saint Luke a saint, <laughs> mainly because he is a physician. On the contrary, during the 20th century, there is a growing tendency to canonize figures of scientists and physicians precisely because they are physicians and scientists, and therefore precisely in virtue of the way in which they practice their profession, because they provide a model of, uh, um, of professionality that uh, is uh, coherent, that is uh, in harmony with Catholic values. This is true, for instance, for uh, the, the Neapolitan uh, physician um, uh, Giuseppe Moscati. But this is just an instance uh, among many others. On the other side, we also have a growing tendency observed by several scholars, among, uh, among which um, Peppino Ortolema, uh, to tell, to narrate the the life stories of prominent inventors, uh, scientists, physicians, etc., by using uh, religious and geographic themes. So the communicative phenomena that we are seeing in these days can be interpreted as part of a wider uh, phenomenon of secularization of religious symbols and uh, geographic models uh, that are growingly applied to uh, profane contexts and to people acting outside the circumscribed uh, and traditional sphere of religion. And on the other hand, uh, there is from the Catholic side the tendency to broaden the notion of sainthood so as to include, for instance, professional categories like uh, those of the physicians and the scientists. So there are these two different tendencies that put together bro uh, bring towards a convergence between sacred and profane and to an extended notion of sainthood. I think that rather than talking about new forms of uh, religiosity, it would be better to talk about the acceleration of existing trends. A good example is provided by the blessing Urbi et Orbi by Pope Francis on March 28, uh, 2020. It's something interesting to analyze from a semiotic perspective because um, there is a contrast between topological categories. So normally, in general, these blessings take place in presence of a big crowd and also, of course, surrounded by the noises that a big crowd is um, uh, usually uh, provokes. Uh, in this case, uh, the, the blessing was surrounded by a perfect silence. There was no one except the, the Pope. And the loneliness of the Pope was something remarked by all the commentators of this uh, scene. However, this loneliness was quite uh, apparent because we know that millions and millions of uh, spectators worldwide sh uh, observed, sh uh, participated in some way to this blessing. So actually the Pope was surrounded by a huge virtual uh, community. So this is uh, an example of what is happening. The forced isolation of, of people during these uh, coronavirus uh, epidemics is leading to a reinforcement of uh, already existing practices, uh, um, uh, religious practices connected to uh, digital media. So there is a growing tendency for people to gather in virtual ways. This uh, um, is connected to a particular idea of fatigue function. For instance, in order to feel part of a community, it is sufficient to uh, pray, to pronounce the same prayers in the same time, at the same time, even if uh, people are not in the same place. Uh, or uh, this fatigue function, this function, this channel between people, this uh, communication channel between people can be opened by connecting uh, through the internet. 
uh, and uh, carry on religious practices together and pray together. Uh, for instance, there are many priests, Catholic priests, offering um, holy masses via Facebook, either uh, on air or in the registered forms. However, even though there is certainly a, a growing trend towards disembodied virtual forms of religious practices and communities, uh, there is also an opposed trend uh, in, in this period, there, which consists in a growing demand for material science. This demand of material science um, can be divided into two main categories. So on the one hand, there is a demand for science, uh, which are sacred objects supposed to uh, have a mediating power. Power. So, for instance, Pope Francis in these days uh, prayed several times and mentioned uh, several times a miraculous crucifix, uh, which is the uh, Crocifisso Miracoloso of the Church of San Marcello al Corso. But there are many examples of uh, similar phenomena, even connected to the public institutions uh, which uh, display sacred symbols such as uh, statues of the virgins, icons, etc. Um, on the other hand, the second category of material signs uh, are um, what Peirce would call indexes. People look for material signs of the presence of God in the world, so they look for Mm, material clues of the fact that they are not alone, that they really have a supernatural interlocutor ready to help them in this difficult situation. For instance, um, some days ago there was a viral image con concerning the, uh, the, uh, 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 a strange halo of light around the sun, who was presented as a strange phenomenon happening the very day of the um, closure of the Vatican because of the coronavirus, and which was of course interpreted as a way uh, to participate to this uh, human tragedy uh, on the part of God. Uh, another case concerns pareidolic objects, uh, namely objects that take particular form, particular shapes. Uh, for instance, another viral image concerned um, some strange clouds that uh, took the form of angels. And in this case too, these uh, pictures became of these clouds became viral exactly as signs, as uh, proofs, as evidences of the fact that God um, and angels are uh, taking care of uh, uh, human beings even in this moment of difficulty. So on the one hand there is this increasing trend towards uh, the disembodiment of religious practices and uh, the creation of virtual communities. On the other hand there is a growing demand for material science either as mediators uh, of prayer, so mediators in the communication between uh, human beings and the deity, or as indexes, as material signs of the presence of the deity of supernatural helpers uh, in, in this moment of, uh, of crisis.